Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2022 AP Chemistry Free Response question number two. This is from the May 2nd exam for the 2022 AP Chemistry exam. Uh, if you want to go to MrAiden.com, I would suggest it go to MrAiden.com. It is hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of resources at a very minimal price. If you're a teacher, you're a student, you want more practice, I got free response questions. I got multiple choice questions all aligned with the exam. Tons of resources. But let's get through this number two question from the 2020 exam. You can see right here, we start with methanol vapor and it's decomposing into equilibrium reaction into carbon monoxide and two hydrogen gases. It is a positive enthalpy, which means it is endothermic. And the first question they ask us for is oxidation numbers, oxidation numbers. Remember, we want to have a claim in evidence, a reason anytime they ask us to justify our answer. So we want to know hydrogen atoms. So I'm going to put hydrogen atoms are something, either oxidized or reduced in the forward reaction in the forward reaction. And so I am going to take a look. Are these oxidized or are these reduced? And I have to use oxidation numbers. So I'm gonna to go to my oxidation numbers. So we have CH3OH. You can see we know hydrogen is plus one. There's three of them, so plus three. This hydrogen is plus one, which means we have positive four overall charge, overall oxidation number from the hydrogens itself, okay? You can see the carbon. The carbon, it, or we know oxygen is negative 2 in this molecule, which means carbon is going to be negative 2. So let's take a look on the other side, on the other side with carbon monoxide, okay, and hydrogen gas. Well, carbon monoxide, if the oxygen is negative 2, the carbon is plus 2. You can see the carbon's changing charges. Hydrogen, when it's a zero charge overall, it's zero there. So that is my evidence, that is my evidence. But remember, I need a claim, I need evidence, and I need a reason. So the hydrogen is going from, is going from plus one oxidation number to zero oxidation number, okay? And so what is happening from plus one to zero? It is gaining negative electrons. It's gaining negative electrons, so therefore it is reduced because gaining electrons is reduction. That's Leo de Lyon goes grr, gain electrons is reduction. So it is reduced. I'm going to fill this in, reduced. And so I have my claim. I have my evidence here and I have my reason. And anytime you justify your, your answer, you need all three, claim, evidence, and reason. Okay. Uh, then we have a Lewis dot structure problem. So anytime I have a Lewis dot structure problem, remember I want my final work inside the box, which means I want some work outside the box. So carbon with oxygen, carbon has four valence electrons. I want to always start by taking a look at the valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, which adds up to 10 valence electrons. So carbon is going to be my central atom and I'm going to put an octet with a single bond on the oxygen. That means we've used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need two more, we put it on the central atom, okay? Then I always look at the central atom. Does the central atom have an octet? One, two, three, four. No, it does not, which means we need to borrow. So we're gonna borrow these electrons and I'm gonna make a double bond. It still does not have an octet, so I'm gonna borrow one more set and that will give me a triple bond. And you can see we still use all 10 valence electrons and each atom has an octet, which means it's gonna be a triple bond with an unshared pair on the carbon, an unshared pair on the oxygen. That is a linear molecule there, okay? Let's go to C. C, we have our chemical reaction uh, given before and they give, us del they give us the S, the entropy of each substance, which means I wanna know the entropy, the change in entropy for the reaction, which means I'm gonna go to my equation sheet, I'm gonna add up all the ent entropies of my products minus all the entropies of my reactants, and this is what I'm going to do. My products are going to be the carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide is 198 joules per mole Kelvin, plus there's two moles of H2, so two times 131 joules per mole Kelvin. I have to multiply that by two because it is joules per mole Kelvin. Minus my reactants, my reactants are the CH3OH, which is 240 joules per mole Kelvin, 
and you can see the delta S for the reaction ends up becoming 217 joules per mole Kelvin. Why is it positive? Why, is, why are we increasing in entropy? You can see my molecules are going from one mole of gas into three moles of gas, which means the reaction is becoming a greater amount of dispersion of particles, and therefore it is a positive 217 joules per mole Kelvin. That is the entropy for the reaction. You can see now, logical, they want to know the delta G. So delta G for the reaction is equal to delta H minus T delta S, okay? And so you can see the delta H they gave me at the beginning was positive 90, and that was kilojoules per mole, kilojoules per mole. Minus the temperature is 375 Kelvin, and the delta S, so we come back to the delta S. The delta S was 217, but watch the units. It's joules per mole Kelvin, which means we need to change those to 0.217 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. You could have also changed the 90 kilojoules per mole into joules. Uh, you just have to be on the same plane field, so you need, you can only subtract kilojoules per mole from kilojoules per mole or joules per mole into joules per mole. And we get positive 8.625 kilojoules per mole. And you can see if we take a look at our uh, our significant digits, 90.0, 217, so we're, I'm going to round that to positive 8.63 kilojoules per mole. I'm going to round that to two, three significant digits right there. And you can see the delta G is positive. What does that delta G positive mean? Is That mean is it is not, not, I can't even spell not, it is not favorable. It is non-favorable reaction. It is a not thermodynamically favorable reaction, which means uh, it will not proceed forward uh, in terms of the equilibrium expression. So now it says particle load diagram represents an equilibrium mixture. The total pressure of the equilibrium mixture is 12, and we're trying to find the partial pressure of carbon monoxide. And so I'm going to add up my number of particles. So you can see I have one of these particles, the C3OH. I have one, two, three of these carbon monoxide particles. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these particles, okay? And therefore, this is going to equal a total pressure of 10 particles, particles. Which means if we had one atmosphere and three atmospheres and six atmospheres, that would add up to 10 total atmospheres of pressure. Well, what do we have here? We have 12 total atmospheres of pressure. Therefore, I can find the pressure of just carbon monoxide, the pressure of just carbon monoxide. You can see it is a proportion. We have, t for every three particles, we get 10 particles. For every quote, for every question mark, we have 12 atmospheres. You can cross multiply, you can do a proportion. We end up getting 3.6 atmospheres. You could work out the CH3OH, the H2, they would all add up to 12 atmospheres, and that is just proportional, like most things in chemistry. And then we have, we're trying to find the Kp. First, we want to just simply write the Kp expression. So you go to your equation sheet, you know how to write a Kp. It's the pressure of carbon oxide to the first power times the pressure of hydrogen gas to the second power over the pressure of CH3. 3OH, and that is the Kp expression, okay? And then they give us information in the table to calculate the Kp. So what are we, we're going to use that expression, which means we're going to put 4.2 atmospheres is the partial pressure of carbon monoxide, 8.4 atmospheres squared over 2.7 atmospheres, and when I do that, I end up getting 109.76 on my calculator. I'm going to round that to three significant digits, which means I'm just going to call that 110 is the value for the Kp. All right. Now we have the volume is rapidly doubling, which means if the volume is doubled, that means the pressure is going to decrease, isn't it? Okay, is going to de decrease. And they're asking, Will the number of moles of CH3OH increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okay, 
And so if you think about it, I need, again, what do I need in any one of these types of problems? I need a claim. What is my claim is this, the CH3 uh, OH, uh, or I should say the number of moles, okay? The number of moles of CH3OH will something. It's either going to either increase, decrease, or remain the same. And so I want to go to my evidence. I want to go to my evidence. And so my evidence is going to be, if you think about it, my evidence will be my Q expression. Okay, so think about my Q expression. My Q is equal to the pressure of CO times the pressure of H2 squared over the pressure of CH3OH. And so if you can see, if the volume doubled, the pressure decreased. The pressure actually multiplied by one half. It's an inversely proportional relationship. So we have one half over one half squared over one half. If you do that, you end up getting one fourth. The Q just is, is now one fourth of what your K was, which means your Q is much less than your KP. So if your Q is much less than your KP, according to Le Chatelier's principle, it's going to compensate for that change. We need this Q to get larger and larger and larger, which means now we're going to go to the reason. Now we're going to go to the reason. That is our evidence. Our evidence is our Q problem. And now we're going to go to our reason. What is our reason is, as the volume increased, the reaction... Uh, will shift according to Le Chatelier's principle uh, to the most amount of moles of gas, which is in the products. Also, the Q is less than your KP. Okay, To increase the Q, to reestablish equilibrium, there will be more products formed, which means the amount of moles of CH3OH will decrease. And the amount of CONH2 will increase, the, that numerator there. So what do we know? What, what are we thinking? We have to fill in our, our claim. We said the number of moles will decrease. The number of moles will decrease. And remember, claim, evidence, reason, that is a full orb AB chemistry answer. You want to make sure you answer every single one of those justify your answer questions that way. And this was the 2022 AP Chemistry free response question number two. Hope that helped. I'll catch you on the flip side. Go to MrRaden.com, by the way, and uh, I'll see you later.